Hey guys, this is Tim Frady. Um, I thought I would show you guys how to uh, create a graphic novel using Paint.net. Now I've got uh, three graphic novels right now from the Caveman comic series. And I use Paint.net almost exclusively to create this, uh, <clears throat> you know, this graphic novel series. And uh, what, here, let me show you... Uh, the uh, first cover and here's the second cover and the third cover and I'm currently working on book four right now um, <clears throat> paint.net is really easy to use and it's free and get it off the internet paint.net it saves things to uh, it saves its files as a dot pdn you see it's a cover dot pdn um, but what we have to do for Amazon is to get to be able to upload the cover is to save it as a JPEG, and of course you have to make sure that it's the right size, uh, a 300 resolution or 300 DPI or pixels per inch, um, and then I take it to another free software, which of course Paint.net is free, but there's another one called GIMP 2 uh, that I use. And so I basically turn it to a JPEG, open it up in GIMP, and then I can save it as a PDF file, which is what Amazon wants the covers to be in. Um, and as far as the, the pages themselves, you also have to uh, be aware and make sure that you have high re resolution. Uh, I've got this. This is an example page. It's set to 300, uh, and size of my book is about 8 by 10. This is a, this is shown 8 by 11. I believe we've got the uh, size is somewhere around eight, eight by ten. Uh, it's better to be a little bit too big than to than be too uh, too small. You can always go smaller if you need to, but you can't go bigger unless you redo it. At least in Paint on that. Otherwise, you're going to lose resolution, and you don't you don't want to do that. So, um, basically, uh, what I do like. Again, here's an example of a page, and it's made out of layers. Uh, most of the time, I'll I'll make each uh, each panel a layer, and I'll come back and make the the text, or maybe a word, or just a balloon or something as a separate text. That way, I can go back in and I can uh, edit it if I need to, and so forth. When I first start out, what I try to do is here here's an example of of Uglug the K-Man. He's like the main character. He's he's kind of goofy. Well, when I first uh, first drew Ugg, all, what I did was I just basically started from scratch. And, and you'll see like in paint.net, what I like is this line tool. And you can come over here and create a layer. And when I first started, I just basically started, whoop, it's too thick. Got a brush with, hit here, and change it. Yeah, about nine or so depends on how thick you want the lines but the neat thing about these line this line tool is you can just sit there and play around with it until it looks like what you're trying to draw you don't have to keep it racing and racing you just keep playing around with it of course once you let off then it's you gotta edit. You gotta edit and do if you want to get rid of it, or actually it'll make you, let you edit again. But this this line up here, this first line, either I undo undo everything, or you know, here's my eraser tool. I can just kind of just erase the part I want to get rid of if I want to do that. But it, this is really really good for people like me, or, or if you were like me and you you like to draw, but you you need all the help you can get. So you've got these shapes here, and you can do eyeballs just real easy. It's like super duper easy. You keep throwing things together, like the way I did is I keep throwing things together and playing around and playing around until something eventually looks like something. And then Like in the case of Ugg here, when I first get, I believe this was about my first actual picture, first actual design where I was like, yeah, I like that. 
So once I got the face the way I wanted it, I basically copied and pasted it again, come over here and just made some small edits to change his expression. Again, you know, here you can change the eyes a little bit, uh, change the mouth. And, uh, here you have, it takes a little bit more when you're going to make, make his mouth big or, or whatever. But then you can come over and once you get the body, <clears throat> you get the body uh, designed. I uh, have it on a separate uh, PDN, but you can copy and paste the heads on there to change these expressions easily. Like, get rid of that head, and boom. Now he's got a different, different look. So I can use the same body over and over again. It makes it a little faster. Just change out the face. It looks like a, you know, a different drawing, expressing a totally different mood. So. Of course, the more I try to get as many designs as I can, and with the body, it's about the same as the face. You can like cut the arm off and paste it different direction if you want. Like, let's say I want to cut like. It'll let you just turn like that. Oops, yeah. And then you just draw I and mean, click off of it. And you have to, of course, you have to come back in here and redraw around it to make it fit the picture. Now he's pointing up at something instead of straight across. Just little things like that, and it saves time. You have to, don't have to redraw draw the whole thing. Oops. Oh. If you don't have the line closed, it'll do the entire page. So, do, do. What I forgot to do is merge this top layer of the arm into the bottom. Now that I've merged it, its lines are closed and allow me to color it in with the bucket there. Voila. Here's a few of my cut, uh, characters. This is uh, Dr. Anne Brainsmart. She marries Ugg through a uh, time travel accident. and That's how Ugg lugged the caveman gets to the present. This is our Kung Fu cat. These kids love kung fu, you know, so. And Oscar the dog, he's half dog, half robot. And this page is uh, from her book three. So you could take this like a, a layer that you've already created or, or something off the internet, maybe a public domain image or a photo. Whatever you want to do, if you want to just draw with a little bit of assistance, take that layer and turn the opacity down. And then get your line tool, make another layer. And you can see, see it in operation here. You can also get this paintbrush tool and you can just, but it's a little bit more tricky with a mouse especially, that's how I do it. So it can be quicker to some degree, but the lines are going to be a little bit more jaggedy. I guess that's the word, jaggedy, jittery. For eyeballs I always get these shapes. Uh, 
eyebrows. I'll just get the brush and just I think it's faster just to draw what you need and then fill it up with a bucket. Of course, beard is pretty jaggedy, I guess is the word. So, I'll have it with a paintbrush. Draw my tongue. And the neat thing about it is really. I noticed that even though I'm not that good of an artist, once I get my drawings colored in just right, they tend to look a lot, a lot better. Uh, one other trick I learned to, to give my work just a little bit of a professional look, I, I guess, it's to make it stand out a little bit more and make up for my uh, my shortcomings and and actually the shape of my characters there I guess it's the hardest thing for me is to draw shapes but once I get the shape down then then adding little details inside the shapes shading and so forth uh, is where I, I do the best personally and uh, you can see here uh, on lug what I do is I take like his skin color and of course you want know, to use the same color every time so I always go back to the original use the dropper boom and uh, I'll color in whatever I'm working on next the same exact color but you can but you can also you can do that get a skin color when you first did you'll come down and just take the colors color palette and just get down a lot of color just like I have here and see it looks kind of looks kind of uh, rushed when you zoom it in like that but when you go down back to the size it'll appear in the, in the book and all it does is it, it just blends in and it you can see it, it gives it this feeling that the, the sun is shining a little bit maybe or some light source on top of from above uh, uh, UG. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I'll add a little shade around uh, bottom areas were like underneath his arm here just anything to add a little more depth okay we're in my fortress of solitude this is not actually this is not a comic book shop this is uh, my room filled with comic book collectibles over, from over the years but my uh, <clears throat> graphic novels that we're going to show you are right here and these are these are the books that I made using uh, uh, paint on that and of course Amazon is the one that actually published them of course if you're familiar with the self-publishing uh, through Amazon you create the content and upload it to them and they print it out on demand and I really really like the quality of this paper It's a lot more expensive than comic books used to be when when I was a kid, but this this paper is just super super thick and crisp, and it's uh, got the colors really stand out. This is the first book. Here's the second bit. Ah, my cats. Cloud Cat and Claw Cat. And there's Oscar the Dog. He's part cyborg. Ah, the villain of the story, Dr. Madbad. It's always causing trouble. 
And of course, this is Ugg. Ugg the caveman. He's the main character of the story. And this is the latest one we have out right now. <clears throat> caveman Comics Boo Scary Monsters for Kids. I think grown-ups like it, too. I mean, I like it. Of course, I'm still a kid, but at heart, but... I'm trying to make these books so that kids can enjoy them, but grown-ups can get a laugh, too. Make them a... I like to put a little something in there for everybody. He is a character that actually uh, was in one of my previous books from a few years ago. And like I said, you can get these these books on Amazon. Um, <clears throat> and we would appreciate uh, if you would uh, give a review once you uh, had a chance to read the book. And here's, we've also put out a black and white book. It's actually a collection of the first three. Just for people who want to to get just uh, a little bit cheaper. You want the stories and you don't care about the extra pretty paper and stuff. And that's it. That's what we got so far. We're working on book four right now, and we're still using paint.net. So, let me know in the comments what you want to see in the future. We can uh, give me some ideas, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Thanks.